Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another live event here at Golden Artist Colors. My name is Ulysses Jackson. I am a senior formulator here at Golden, uh, and I'm joined today by Lad and Bernie, uh, the fabulous humans and inventors of Pan Pastel, which we're so thrilled to welcome into our Golden offering. Um, so in my, and also we're joined today uh, off screen by our materials and application specialists who will be answering questions in the chat as well as feeding us questions uh, from the audience. So we really look forward to those. So thank you all for joining us today. And we're really thrilled to uh, get to talk about Pan Pastel. So, um, Lad and Bernie, uh, since probably most of our audience, some of them, hopefully do know about Pan Pastel, but some might not. So I was hoping you could explain to us a little bit about the invention mm -hmm. of Pan Pastel and what it offers the artists that might be uniquely different from a conventional pastel. Okay, great. Thank you, Ulysses. Uh, we're so excited and delighted to be here at Golden. We've been um, living and, and working um, in New Berlin, New York, where Golden is based and manufacture all their products. And um, for the last almost three months and we've really enjoyed being alongside working side by side with the golden team a bunch of great people so thank you for having us so a little bit about pan pastel so the idea be behind the product is um, most people are familiar with the pastel stick format and it's been pastel medium has been in a stick format for hundreds of years and before that obviously um, humans have been using raw pigment to um, create art uh, going back thousands of years. So uh, there hadn't been much, many changes other than um, the original uh, presentation of pastel in the stick format originally, um, go, uh, as I say, going back the hundreds of years. So we decided to look at that and see if we could develop and deliver a new format for artists. And the format we came up with was the pan format. So it's basically pastel in a pan um, and it brings a lot of new ways that you can use the pastel medium. So it's still a dry medium, uh, but we wanted to make uh, a, dry, a medium that worked uh, between a drawing and a painting material, between wet and dry. So basically it's a dry medium that functions like a paint, it's paintable. Uh, and that brings, other than being paintable, it allows the artist to mix uh, dry colors for the first time and it also, and here you can see an example of where you can blend colors together. And that's a really unique characteristic. Yeah, so I often think of when I'm drawing with something, the tool itself is making the mark, like a pencil makes the mark. Right. And then when I'm painting, I'm grabbing a tool to dip into a paint and then transferring the product to that. So would this right. be, this would be more like a paint type of system? Uh, yes, because it's, um, it's, it's functioning like a paint um, with the, the combination of the tool. And the, the soft tools that uh, you can see being used um, at the moment allow you to make a variety of marks in the same way you might do with a wet medium and a brush. And that was a really unique invention as well. Right. right? A standard yes. sponge doesn't apply in the same way. Could you talk yes. a little bit about how the soft tool might be different from yeah. some other materials? Do you want to take yeah, that? Yeah, so, um, <coughs> so we developed the soft tools uh, out of a, uh, we call it a micro pore sponge. So it's, it's quite dense, picks up just the right amount of color, lays down quite just the right amount of color. Uh, the knife covers that we developed and the uh, sponge bars, they're basically uh, traditional brush range, uh, flat, round, filbert, and point. So we didn't uh, deviate off of, with too many different shapes and sizes and things like that. But the uh, sponges are key. You can, uh, you, if you have a pan pastel in front of you, take a swipe with your finger, put it on a piece of paper, pick up a soft tool, take a swipe, and you'll see a drastic difference between the two. So the, uh, the sponges are, are very important to the range. And I thought it was really neat that on these handles, which you also invented and are, are patented under the, the soft tool brand, uh, the tips are removable, right? So you could put yes, another correct. one on. Yeah. So if you say you're a little heavy handed, you wear one out, uh, you can get extra tips to replace that. Yeah, and the idea, the Ulysses behind that, was to take a non-absorbent painting tool and make it absorbent by putting the cover, the sponge cover, on All right. the tool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So. And now I know when I've drawn in the past with a standard stick pastel, um, I, I make a mark and it's a very you know, hard mark. And then I spend right. a lot of time 
getting rid of that. Is that right. something that you have to worry about with the, the pan pastels? Uh, no, because, well, there are a number of uh, differences. So uh, pan pastel by no means replaces a pastel stick. Uh, that wasn't our intention. Our intention was to bring a new medium, a new material to artists to explore. And uh, one of the things that, pa as you say, the pastel stick gives a very uh, a signature mark. Right, let's uh, uh, yeah, do let's an overhead and maybe give an example of what that looks like. So everyone's kind of familiar with the kind of the chattery mark, right? And, and you can see the, uh, the, the texture of the paper is coming through, it's showing through there. And pas uh, pastel sticks are a more opaque. Um, and then the, uh, the pan pastel mark is, let's compare those, that lush, wow, look at that. I love how as it kind of goes over itself, you get that different intensity. That's yes, really cool. you have a lot more control over the uh, opacity and transparency. Look at, it's kind of glidey. It's like right. a little slippery maybe, it, is that how would you describe it? It's kind it, of what a would you velvety, people velvety. Is, describe it as velvety, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, um, and we, our intention was to keep all this, the good characteristics of the pastel medium, so the purity of color, mm -hmm. the vibrancy, the fact that it's instant, and also because it's a dry medium, it doesn't, uh, the color doesn't shift. So what you see is what you get when you, when you paint the color, because right. you're not going yeah. from wet to dry. Uh, but at the same time, um, there were uh, some characteristics that are, we wanted to add to that. So the mixability we've just shown, uh, they're low dust to use, um, and they're also erasable. Oh, they're erasable? Can we? Yes. We we'll, I'll show you a quick erasing uh, exercise here on the marks, I guess we have them uh, up on top. And this one is the mark we just made. Oh, this look at that, comes right off. Comes that's right a off. vinyl eraser? This is, is just a vinyl, vinyl standard vinyl eraser. You can try any eraser you want to. They're slightly different marks. Some may be a little bit more crumbly. The vinyl erasers are probably the, uh, the best ones that we tried. I think one of, the, one, of the biggest, um, one of the biggest things about the color is that it's, uh, it's instantly mixable. So you can see in the demonstration on the uh, photograph that uh, you have red and yellow and you instantly have orange. There's no, it works exactly like a fluid medium. Like a paint, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, it's, but it's dry, it's erasable. Um, and, the and pans can stay open. You don't need to worry about covering them. They won't dry out, so. Yeah, that's super cool to have the, like the open palette. Well. Yes. And can you use pastels with them? Yes, yep. yeah. Yeah, so uh, we can go to overhead shot again there. We're just gonna go back to the same uh, piece we're working on here. This is the pastel stick, fully compatible with the pan pastel. Super cool. And I think uh, it's probably a great time. We just covered a lot of information, so right. maybe to turn to the audience to see if there's any questions coming in from the field we can. Address. Yes, we have some great questions. Um, so let's go to this one here. You were, when you were putting out the, um, you mentioned that it was lower dust right. burning. Um, yeah. There was a question about shed. So can you talk a little bit about how uh, the pan pastel has less shed maybe right. than, a, than a traditional stick pastel? Yes, um, because um, if we could have an overhead shot here, please. Because it's a combination of the soft tool and the fact that you're, you're able to lift a controlled amount of color from the pan. <clears throat> when you push the color into the, uh, onto the paper, when you apply the color, it pushes into whatever tooth is there. So the combination of the tool and the pan format really helps with that. Occasionally, um, I will see that uh, sometimes someone in a workshop might be overworking the pan. So you only really need to swipe it once or twice. And if you see a little dust gathering on the pan surface, that just means that the sponge tool is saturated. There's nowhere for that color to go and it's going back on the pan. So you just maybe apply a little less pressure and just only one or two swipes is necessary. And that was one of the amazing things to me when I started using the, the pan pastels, how easy it is to take it off. So yeah. what I found was really nice about that is I could have the palette and just be dipping back and forth. I'm not working to get the color, to, to lose my concentration. Right. It's just really effortless to, to go between. Yes. And then also cleaning off the tool on a paper towel to yeah. get your fresh color is really nice so, as well for yeah. how quick that can go. So you don't need a, a different tool for every color. You just can remove any excess um, pigment that's on there. Your color is still stained from, because we're dealing with artist pigments, um, from the color you just used. 
but you can switch to another color. So I'm going to switch to yellow uh, with very little contamination between the yeah, colors. That's really so, remarkable. Yeah. yeah, are there any other questions? Oh, yes, we have several. Um, I'm going to actually combine two questions that showed up in the chat. Um, one is, are there any mediums for pan pastel? And then just to clarify, um, there was another question that asked about mediums in terms of like media, mixed media, um, when it comes to adding, say, acrylic or watercolor or oil. Can you speak to first the mediums that are dry, that are for pan pastel, and then maybe how it might play with others. Great, so maybe you guys take the first one, and okay. I'll take the second one. Okay, okay. that All sounds right. good. So do you want to? Uh, do yeah, so we, we, developed, um, we developed five pastel mediums. Uh, the mediums actually, when we sat down and started thinking about those, they came straight off the concept of Golden's mediums, which are extensive. And we thought, why not have a pastel medium that kind of mirrors the idea that Golden puts all these different texturing texturing mediums for artists to use. We have a uh, colorless blender, which is an absolutely wonderful uh, uh, color. It's actually colorless, but it, we still call it a color. It's, uh, it's a weak white. So when you, want to, uh, when you want to extend a color on your substrate, you can use this instead of white, so you're not getting that sort of immediate, um, it's a little bit more controllable than the white. We also have a, um, a fine pearl white, a coarse pearl white, a fine black white, and a coarse black. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so they're basically um, a mica-based. They go down very nice. They've got a little bit of shimmer on the fine, me fine mediums, and the coarse mediums have got a little bit extra shimmer. So it's a way to make your own pearlescent colors, for example, taking the pearl white medium and adding it to one of the original colors. And just on the colorless blender, lad, another important point is that you, it's, you can extend the color. So it allows the color to become more transparent and flow more and you can extend it more without making it opaque as if you were to add white instead of the colorless blender you would get a tint yeah so more of a opaque tint right yeah. so that would be analogous to say an acrylics using like a gloss medium to make a glaze exactly right yes yeah. yeah and so the second part of the question of how do these play with acrylics and oils so you know with our our brands we want them all to be able to be used uh, pretty freely. So uh, before we acquired Pan Pastel, uh, we did extensive testing to make sure that you could paint over them with acrylics, that you wouldn't have any adhesion issues, that you could go over acrylics with them, you can go over them with oils, and um, there's even some techniques where you can use a wet oil first to, to put down a, a nice wet bed and then do the Pan Pastel over the wet oil and get some really neat scruff, uh, you know, scruffito uh, effects there. So it's really versatile and it does play nice with other media um, as well as you know watercolor can be used in a mixed media kind of setting. So it really does just open up more potential for artists. Uh, I've been finding it's really fun to start with a pan pastel for, um, for kind of uh, you'd say blocking out work or, right. or starting and work. Uh, underpainting and then move to refine that uh, in parallel with other media. That's pretty exciting. And I think the other cool thing for artists is even if you've de devoted your life to one particular medium or you, you're going down, um, you, you've focused on a particular medium, introducing a few pan pastels to uh, your techniques and trying them out, it's amazing how you can push um, your, your techniques further by incorporating um, pan pastel colors. And do you, do you find that um, people who do representational work are, are able to use the pan pastels as well as people who do abstract work? Yeah, very much so. I think um, it, on Instagram, if you look at hashtag pan pastel, you'll find a wide and extensive variety from super realistic portraits through to very abstract uh, work as well and combined with encaustic and cold wax and oh, amazing. all different techniques. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's that's very exciting. Very cool. What else, uh, what else do we have for questions out there? Yeah, we're getting a lot of great questions. Okay, Keep them coming. Um, okay. so, so this one, um, I'm actually combining a few questions and comments. Um, can you talk a little bit about you know, the relationship between the pastel and the, the preparation of the substrate or the paper? Um, because we, we did have some folks commenting on they use, um, they use pan pastel in combination with some of their acrylics um, as, a pre as a preparation as a ground, and then others were asking about different papers. So maybe just a little sort of high level uh, understanding about the influence of the, the two together okay. would be great. 
Oh, great. Yeah, so maybe we should bring over a sanded paper and yes. get a fresh piece of watercolor paper here yep. to show how that affects. And then, so these are conventional and papers. And as well. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, Golden makes a, a number of grounds designed for, uh, and textures designed for uh, additional effects. But this yes. will give a great example for three different surfaces and their kind of effect on the mark. So, um, yeah. Bernie, maybe you can explain what we have in front of us. Yeah, just, sheet here. just a little background. So one, that's one of the most common questions we get, what surface to use pan pastel on. And really, the answer is it's a limit, it lim limitless. Uh, there are limitless possibilities with paper, because unlike um, sticks, where you need some tooth um, to hold the color, uh, with pan pastel, you have more control over the color being laid down, and the sponge is pushing, as I said earlier, is pushing the color into whatever tooth is there. So you really can go from smooth, low tooth surfaces to really textured uh, surfaces that are high tooth, like sanded papers. So here we've got Upo, this first one. The one in the middle is pastel mat, which has grab. And then the third one is a drawing pastel uh, paper. So, so this really is kind of like a fine, almost like a micro sand paper, a little <laughs> barely toothy. Yes. Yeah. 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 And sanded papers work great. Uh, watercolor papers, printmaking papers, canvas. The it, it really is. Everybody should experiment and try, and they'll figure out what works best for them. And then the next uh, thing, and maybe lad, you can demonstrate, and I'll, I'll just explain the. Um, the same color will look very different on each so surface. Which tool is this? So this is the angle slice round. It's one of the larger, uh, one of the three larger tools. We have an angle slice round, a uh, angle slice flat, and then the big oval. And those are primarily used for laying down, for blocking in larger areas. So I'm just okay. going to take a couple swipes of uh, color. This is on the sort of uh, traditional drawing paper. You can see you get a, you get a mark. That I'm going to wipe the tool off. This is the pastel mat, so you're going to see an immediate grab, much more intense color, and then the same color on the uh, polypropylene uh, UPO paper. Get extremely transparent color. So the, the tooth of this paper is, is giving you a lot more uh, density, but it removes it quicker. Is that yeah. basically right. from the right. load? And so you get just a different amount of, of flow. In yes. Essence, based on the surface of the paper. Yeah, you'll find a very different coverage for every different substrate. So if you're using a smooth paper, one swipe of color will go quite a ways for blocking in the, the uh, paper. You get a toothy paper, you're going to have an immediate grab, and it'll uh, it'll use up the pastel right away, and you need to go back for more. But you still need a little bit of tooth, so a glossy surface is probably the only surface that pan pastel wouldn't, it needs something so to grab So you don't want to try it on just straight plexiglass? No, no, no. Okay. no. Yeah, or a, a super sense. glossy um, substrate or ground, right. yeah. Yeah, great. Terrific. I mean, I suppose you could put the pastel ground on plexiglass and try that. That'd yeah, be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, that was wonderful. Thank you. Um, so I have a couple more questions. One came up that we actually were talking about earlier today. Um, if you don't mind the soft tool, why not just use a makeup sponge? We, yeah, that's a, that, <laughs> that's a question that has come up over the years. Um, well, first of all, um, the sponges are very different. When you compare them side by side, pan pastel or soft sponges are a much denser uh, sponge material. And it actually took us two years alongside developing the colors to get the right, the optimum uh, formulation of sponge. Um, makeup sponges are intended to be used on a very delicate surface, the skin, one or once or twice a day, and they're used with really low pigment uh, products, uh, cosmetic products, eyeshadow, that type of thing. So they really aren't intended for the uh, type of uh, rigors that they'll put through, be put through in the studio. Here we're de dealing with very highly pigmented colors. We're dealing with everything from sanded paper through to smooth paper. We don't know what the artist is going to be using it on. So we need it to make sure that the sponge is durable enough that it can stand up to um, some of those surfaces and be used in the studio, but soft enough that it doesn't 
uh, dig or um, kind of um, make marks in the sponge, it, hold, it will lift the right amount of color so that you can control it from the pan to the surface. So, Lad, do you have anything to add on, on that? Uh, no, just the, uh, in general, the cosmetic sponges that you find in any of the, any of the drug stores, they're of a much larger pore size. So you're gonna find that they pick up a, a lot of color when you go um, to put it on the surface, the first thing that happens is that color falls off onto the paper and, and, you, like yes. and you lose control yeah. over the mark and the, uh, the pastel, the pan pastel sort of just is on the paper and you need to work with it on the surface. Yeah. Awesome, thank you for taking that one. Um, we have a lot of questions around fixative and fixative and mixed media applications. I know you won't be able to answer that specifically without right. knowing what they're doing, but right. just a, a general, you know, um, if you don't mind talking about fixative and uh, what are some attributes of a good application, a good fix, maybe right. that'll be helpful. Thank do you. you. Do you want sure. to yeah, I think fixatives are pretty uh, straightforward for pan pastel. Use them like you would any other, fixative for any other dry medium. If you're using, if you're gonna use it uh, in mixed media, Let's say you're using a pencil or a graphite or something like that. You can use pan pastel side by side with it and fix it the exact same way. We always recommend three light coats of, of a fixative instead of trying to, trying to get it fixed in one coat. Um, that's true for uh, pencils, pastel sticks, pan pastel. That's the best way to apply fixative. Otherwise, you end up uh, saturating. You may have some color shift in the, in the, um, in the dry medium. And uh, uh, that's what we recommend, uh, three light coats. And some people don't use pastel fix, they don't want to use it, or sorry, uh, fixative. Um, it's compatible with all pastel fixatives. The, the good thing about um, soft, the soft sponges pushing the color into whatever tooth is there on the paper, it kind of holds the color and grabs it. And yes, it's a dry medium, so you can still, if you wanted to, you could still deliberately smudge uh, it. Smudge yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It depends, some, some people don't care about that because it's not going to be rubbed uh, when it's uh, you know, a finished piece of yeah. artwork. Can but we, if you want to protect it. Can we go to a, a top shot real quick? Uh, I'm just, what I'm gonna do, we just made this mark on the toothy paper. So this is the heaviest applied pan pastel. See, we just yeah. tap that off. There's very little, very little dust coming off the paper, which, is, which gets back to the uh, fixative question. You don't need fixative as much or as often as you normally would on uh, pastels. But it is a personal preference. Some people um, prefer to use it, some people don't. Sure, and for the artist who is aware of the saturation, they could use our MSA. We currently, Golden does not produce our own fixative, but we do offer our MSA archival varnish that some artist uses a, a varnish fixative, but it is going to do that saturation uh, okay. and give that really robust protection. And so certain times, you know, some people who want to show something without glass might actually varnish it, but you just would have to be aware of the change in value. Maybe practice on some test piece first, get used to what that will do so you can accommodate that with your composition. So there was actually um, someone that was in the chat describing their use on polymer clays. Are there any unusual um, applications that, uh, that are out there that might be fun to hear about? Um, well, pan pastel is being applied in all different directions and one of the cool things about it, because it's dry color, it's being used um, to recreate something, whether it's in polymer clay or in, in other media, um, that looks realistic. So if you're, trying, you're creating a model, that type of thing, because um, sure you can do that with other color mediums but because it's dry color it doesn't look painted on so some techniques call for a more realistic effect and pan pastel works good for that. The uh, pan pastel can be applied to the polymer clays you can knead it into the clay change the color you can apply it to the surface bake it and it's uh, it acts just like the regular uh, polymer clays. And that's something yes. that it can do that our other products can't do. So someone recently showed me the polymer clay they had done where right. they had, while it was still wet, applied the pan pastel to the surface before baking it. And it was really quite remarkable it and is, exciting yeah. new area that I, I didn't think. And, yes. that, and that, was, so um, that was something that really when we good. developed the product, we had, had no intention of it fitting that part of the market. We uh, were very happy that it was working for pan pastels but, um, uh, and the polymer clays. And it's, uh, it's great to see how the product has, has grown and fit into different parts of the market. But well, when we were developing it, we knew 
we knew by putting putting it out there that material that artists would take it and make it their own and that's that's what exactly what's been happening so it's exciting for us and I know it will be for Golden to s explore all the op all the ways yeah. that it's being used. That is exciting. And there are some um, techniques that I um, have been wowed by. So maybe we could show the stenciling thing. Sure. That, yeah. I thought that was really different from conventional pastel. Just stack these up and use the same yeah. page. Yeah. So this is just a, a regular stencil. You can lay that down on the paper. And just going to clean off the sponge here. So if you're doing this technique uh, with a conventional pastel, what would happen? Well, it would be much harder to, um, maybe we can just show with the, the stick pastel that we've got. It'll sure, of, I'll try the stick much, pastel right next to it there. It's just going to glide over the... Right, um, it only the hits stuff. the high points, yeah. it doesn't hit the low, versus the pan pastel that really transfers that mark right through, yeah. giving you um, just that, that really you know, versatile, you can make your own stencil. Right. Um, it's just really different from the, uh, the conventional pastel for that. Yes, yeah. Okay. Piece of paper here. What other questions do we have? Well, we're getting new ones all the time. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I, that, that stimulated a lot of interesting questions in the chat about encaustics, other types of clay, and uh, it's nice to see um, folks attending talking to each other which is oh, wonderful great. Oh, good. Um, so you know there's a lot of interest there and I think it'll be fun to do more and more events as we as we move through this um, Ulysses was there anything um, like I think we, we were gonna ask a question of the audience about yeah yeah, well, yeah so that's a great so one of the things that I'm really excited about being in the research and development side is that Ladd and Bernie brought a lot of new product ideas to us that um, you know, they have a lot of great ideas, but they're a very small team. And so now that we have the resources of Golden behind it, we're really excited about expanding the offerings uh, of Pan Pastel to the marketplace. Um, but as we get into that, uh, thinking about new products and new colors, we were wondering to the audience, what, what might be beneficial to you? And so we'd love to hear your feedback and ideas around what might be some great uh, extensions in the Pan Pastel soft tools line. Yeah, that was an area that Ladd and I, even though, even though we um, saw all these ways and directions that the color range or that the products could go or the concept could go, uh, it was really hard in a small, like a small business like ours to be able to have all the time. There weren't enough hours in the day to be yeah. able to uh, deliver pan pastel, manufacture it and get it to uh, the various countries around the world and then at the same time continue developing um, the ideas. So, so being with, Go sorry, uh, Ulysses, yeah. being with Golden is wonderful because that's what you guys are so good at and um, the team here is amazing. You've got all the technology and all the um, resources to be able to do that, so. Yeah, it's really exciting. So as those pr uh, product suggestions come in, uh, maybe we should talk about the range as it stands, how many colors uh, we have in Pan Pastel, right. and how the maybe the tint and uh, shade system kind of is set up. Yes, um, we don't mm. really have examples, but... Have uh, some kits here. Okay, yes. Yep. So... Can we so get an overhead shot, please? So there are, um, there are 20 mass tones, 20 pure colors in the range, and then each color has a corresponding tint, shade, and extra dark. So the extra, uh, the tint is the mass tone with white, the shade is the mass tone or the pure color with black, and the extra dark is the mass tone or pure color with more black. So um, it gives people the possibility of mixing in any direction um, and creating the, uh, their own values as well. Yeah, so you could either, so you can get um, all four for convenience, right. or you could also make your own with white and black, yes, right? So absolutely. that's the, the blending versus that convenience. I find as an artist, sometimes I just want to do the, you know, hit the same place to start with, right. and it's really great to have it pre-mixed. Yes. You know, certainly if you bought, say, one, you could, you know, mix, mix on own. the fly as yes. desired. That's exactly yeah. right. And so there are 80 colors, 80 of what we call the original colors, and then there are six uh, metallics, six pearlescents, and um, the five mediums. So there's 97 in total. 
Very cool. And I see as these sets sit here that it actually comes with some free applicators in the bottom. Yeah, right? the, the sets. That's novel. Yeah. Lets people get going right away. So that's yeah. pretty neat. Each set has, um, has some uh, free soft tools. Cool. We, we want the artist to be able to enjoy using Pan Pastel the minute they buy it. So that's why we've, we've continued to put those in the sets. So. Very cool. So Stacy, do we have any ideas coming in from the field? Tons. It's oh, wonderful. Exciting. Thank you, everybody. Are there any uh, unusual ones or interesting ones we should uh, talk about? Oh, uh, unusual? I, I think, um, wow, I mean, there's some great ones. I, there's a desire for like a half pan set that's been mentioned a few times and um, uh, urban sketching and okay, so polymer clay. Kind like, of yeah, directions oh, of yeah. Use. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those some, are really, yeah. Yeah, well, really nice. We'll go through this chat and, and uh, gather all of these requests and take a look at them. Thank you, everybody. Most excellent. That's good. So um, one thing you were showing me the other day, Lad, was that really neat stamping thing. Right. Yeah. Right. So this is a, uh, this is a, a clear uh, stamp pad. It happens to be Versamark. You can take a regular, any uh, stamp, and you can just dab it on the, on the pad. Put it on the paper. And just take a color. Let's get a nice dark color on that. Nice dark, dark color? All right, we'll do a dark color. OK. Oh, wow. So there's the magic. I'm sure, you're all, I'm sure you're all wooing at this point. <laughs> I'm wooing. Every time I'm wooing. That just you know, what's has nice? a lot of possibilities. What's so. nice, you can take the tool and just add a bit of color to it. Yeah. They're fully erasable, so you can go back in and actually uh, erase over it, and you get a little bit of, uh, I need to let this dry just a little bit, but it's very easy to clean up. Yeah, that's really neat. So Stacy, what, what's on your mind? Yeah, thank you. Um, since you, we last chatted, Ulysses, okay. um, our community um, organizer here has dropped in a link for everybody. So it would be amazing if you went to the link in the chat and put your ideas for new, you know, ex what you would like to see us do in our innovation. Um, and we'll collect those there as well. So thank oh, you amazing. so much. Yeah, We'd love great. it if you joined us and took a leap over there and took a moment to fill that out. Wonderful. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So are there any uh, la final questions or are we? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so there's a question of um, whether anything was gonna change now that Golden uh, acquired Pan Pastel. And so uh, one of the reasons that Bernie and Ladd uh, partnered with us is they feel confident that we're gonna tr take their formula and be good stewards of it. So in my role in, in research and development, we always wanna keep things working unless, uh, unless something was uh, forced to change. So, so we have no intention of changing or cheapening or doing anything to the product uh, unless, say, sometimes a manufacturer might discontinue a raw ingredient. Then we would be you know, forced to find a color that hopefully looks exactly the same. And what we've done with our brands is when we've made a change like that, we talk about it. So um, the only change I know of currently is we currently have yellow ochre in the line, listed as yellow ochre. Um, but it, it actually uses yellow oxide as the pigment in the current formula. So you will see the name change on the product, but inside it's still the exact same material. We just wanted it to reflect the uh, correct pigment identification number. So, so that is one thing we will be changing, uh, but overall we want to keep everything like it is. We think it's really great and fascinating technology, super different from what we've done before, really opens up a great new area for product development, for future offerings, and uh, versatility. And there's so many techniques that we don't know yet, right? So we look forward to hearing from our audience uh, how you use it. And so any way you can get that information to us will be helpful for us. And, um, and along the way, we're always looking to partner with, with you, the artists, uh, to, to fulfill your dreams. So. We thank you for being out there. Yeah, I think uh, just so everyone knows, the transition was flawless. Uh, three weeks in November from our factory to Golden's. Uh, the formulas are the same, techniques are the same, manufacturing's identical, and uh, it's absolutely flawless. And Lad's been out there getting our team up and running, making sure everything's smooth. He's been working with me on the quality control side. 
we have really nice quality standards in place and are just super excited to, to have this offering to just grow our portfolio. I don't. I, I think all you're going to see is is uh, new and exciting um, color extensions and other things coming from the relationship with Pan Pastel and Golden. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I want to thank everyone again for joining us today, and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. So, have a fantastic day. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thanks, everyone. Bye.